Okay guys, thanks for tuning in once again and this video I am taking a look at 10 of the possibly most ludicrously difficult games ever. Now I know this uh, list will obviously vary from person to person, it might just be that I am completely pish and I'm sure that has got a lot to do with it. So, kicking things off, um, they're not in any order by the way, well I've kept the last couple to the very end, they're probably the toughest ones in my opinion. Kicking things off is the mighty Ghosts and Goblins by Capcom. Now this and its uh, sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts, it's, it's well known for being ridiculously difficult. I mean, the thing that you need to understand about arcade games, they were designed to make money. When fruit machines kind of, you know, they didn't so much have their day, um, they realised, wait a minute, these video game things, we can make money, so they were put into pubs, clubs, arcades, to make money, nothing else. Yeah, I mean, if people enjoyed them, that's fine, but they were basically, basically designed to get as much money as possible out of the punter. And uh, this this one <laughs> was very successful at doing that. I've been playing this game on and off pretty much since I got the since meme came out. So I've been playing this game on and off probably for about ten years, and I have never ever got past the second level. Even even the, the first level, trying to get past it sometimes. I mean, I can have five goes, four of them I won't even get off the first level. So it's just a it's such a difficult game. I mean, it's beautiful, and that is where, you know, Capcom really, really, they did a cracking job with this. I mean, they've made it gorgeous looking, it sounds amazing, and it just draws you in. You want to play it, you want to see what level's coming next, but they've made it so difficult, it obviously just keeps, oh, what was that? You just, you know, you just need to keep pumping money into the damn thing. <laughs> But the music in this game is outstanding. I mean, I did do a video uh, last week or the week before, I think it was. Uh, sort of games made a lot better with having cracking soundtracks, and this game is one of them. Now, see, I'm actually doing quite well today. I can't imagine how skillful somebody would have to be to complete this game. And this level in particular is an absolute sod. <laughs> I did have it on the C64 and it was bloody hard as well. Probably, I'd probably say it was just as difficult in the Commodore 64 as it was in the arcade. There's just, uh, there's no let up, there's no let up and there's no real kind of pattern to the baddies either so you really don't know what's kind of coming. You're always having to be kept on your toes and it's, you know, it, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a tough game. Let me just see how far I can get. Oh, I think it's my last life so. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now see, this is quite uh, unusual for me to get this far into the game. It's typical, when I make a game about how tough games are, uh, I get quite far in it. And there we go. Yep, that is Ghosts and Goblins, and that is one of the toughest games in the world, bar none. Right, this one, um, I've never actually played before, but I was doing a wee search on sort of like famously difficult games, and this one is at the top of the list. This is Contra, and this is on the NES. Now, I do know, I've never played the NES one, but I do know that the Super Nintendo one is really, really difficult. It's a brilliant game. It's one of my favourite games, actually, in the system, um, but it's just so difficult. So let's give this one a go. I've never actually played it. But I've been told it's super hard, so let's just see how we get on. Got to see, I'm actually quite, uh, quite impressed with the graphics in this version. Also, it's one of my favourite uh, games in the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. 
even with let's say a bloody scrolling. Well, I'm super impressed. I haven't actually died yet. Now it's maybe because I've been told it's super difficult. I'm taking my time. <laughs> Spoke too soon. It's kind of like Green Beret, but without, I don't know, but it's kind of like Green Beret <laughs> without the platforms. Or the ladders, I should say. It's got plenty of platforms. Yeah, but, you know, going by my, uh, my sort of two and a half minutes of playing this game, I wouldn't have said it's one of these impossible games, but possibly getting, you know, the level after this, it ramps up in difficulty, I don't know. Anyway, that is Contra, and that is on the NES. Right, next up is Prohibition. Um, there's probably a lot of people, in fact, probably the majority of people have never actually even seen this game. This was uh, the very, very first 16-bit uh, game that I ever saw. My mate bought an Atari ST and he got this game in Arkanoid. <laughs> And yeah, it's kind of a, it's a shooter, it's an Operation Wolf game. But the baddies randomly appear at windows, and you can see that you've got the timer, which is the time it's going to take the guy before he shoots you. And you've basically got to just move about as quickly as you can, looking for the person. <laughs> oh, what's going on there? I mean, it's. I mean, I didn't even know where he was there. That's two games down. Let's go again. Yeah, it's, it's all memory. But the thing that makes it ludicrously, ludicrously difficult is how fast the, the screen scrolls with the mouse. It moves way too quick. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Oh. That is just impossible. <laughs> oh, there is a kind of arrow that sort of shows you where he is, but... So yeah, that is number two on the list. That is Prohibition, and that is on the Atari ST. Next one is a very, very familiar game to everybody. This game appears on lists of uh, a similar title. This isn't so much... It's, it's a memory game. And that is where this game falls down. It's all about memory. You run into obstacles that you've got, you've got simply no way of knowing are going to come your way unless you've played the game before. You know, you've got all these kind of leaps of faith, there's spikes below you, you don't know you're going to hit them until you die. So it's a very, very unfair game. I played it a lot though because, you know, it, graphically wise, it's, excuse me, it's really, really nice. And I think that's, that's what's frustrating about the game, it could have been so much better. It could have been an excellent um, platformer game, but... Because you've got no way of avoiding baddies unless you've actually played it before, uh, it just makes it totally unfair. There was a sequel, I can't remember if the sequel addressed the issues with this game, I really can't remember. But as you'll see shortly, there's there's like spikes that appear and you wouldn't you wouldn't know unless you've already been killed. There you go, I mean. 
I, I mean, I had no idea that these spikes were there. You know, that's exactly what I mean. It's just, it's a complete, it's just a gamble. You know, there's a lot of luck involved in the game as well. But it is, it's, it's, it's a memory test. That doesn't really look a good game, I don't think. The funny thing is, when I was playing it back in the day, it was frustrating, but I still enjoyed it. And it was only later on when people actually said to me, it's a memory game, you know, it's, it's not a game that you can uh, be particularly good at. It's all about just remembering what's coming. And it... it you know, it struck me then, I thought, yeah, that's exactly right, you know, it's, it's, it's all about just knowing what's coming. Yeah, anyway, that's number three in the list, that is Rick Dangerous. Right, next up, oh, and this is on the Amiga, this is called Power Drome. I remember seeing a review of this in one of the magazines and I always thought it looked amazing. Graphically wise, it just looked amazing, but I will shortly uh, demonstrate, once I've put my name in, just how uh, difficult this game is. I mean, I, I can imagine it's a very, very fine line when you're making a game, you know, how difficult do you make it? You make it too easy, people are going to complain and say it's too easy, they didn't get any value from money. But then you make it too difficult like this, then you, you know, as a gamer, you just stop playing it. But as always, I was always really, really impressed with the graphics in this game, and this game could have been so good, bar you know for the fact that it's well, I find it nigh on impossible to actually play. I think you can use the joystick to control it as well, but I'm using the mouse here. It is just so sensitive, you even touch the side and it's it's game over. <laughs> but it just looks really, really nice. Got really super smooth uh, sort of frame rate. <laughs> now I do appreciate that I'm only playing this game for what, you know, two minutes. Um but I did play it. I did try to play it back in the day, and I have tried to play it since. And each time, I feel completely miserably, just like I'm doing here. I don't know whether it'd been any easier in joystick, possibly, maybe keys. Yeah, considering it's a race game, <laughs> I mean, I've not even, I've not even got around the first corner. I'll maybe need to give it a go in my, uh, my real Amiga upstairs, but I don't think it'll be any any different. But again, if they just, I don't know, if they just tweaked the controls, made it less sensitive, you know what, there's, there's possibly options in this to do that. Um, so yeah, don't take my word for it, go and try the game yourself. There may be options where you can tweak the, the sensitivity of the mouse. But the fact that, you know, you just, you grind to a standstill, I don't even know what the green part is. You grind to a complete standstill every time you even so much as feather the, the side of the wall. And it's not what you want in a, a fast-paced, uh, shoot, not a shooting game, driving game. I mean, it, it kind of looks like a, a very early wipeout. The mouse control is just so sensitive. So yeah, anyway, that is Power Drone on the Amiga. Now, no list of impossibly difficult games would be complete without this uh, chestnut. <laughs> this video, this particular game, has actually featured in quite a few of my videos uh, on YouTube, in different for different reasons. I uh, I did include it in a possibly one of the worst games. I think, it, in fact, what was it called? It was called 10 of the worst budget games ever. And I featured this, and I got a bit of flack from quite a few people saying, 
how could you include this um, in the list? It's not a bad game. Now, graphically, I mean, sonically, it is awesome. It's got an absolute kick ass uh, Rob Hubbard tune. Graphically wise, it looks nice, although why they've chosen the top third of the screen, whereas the two bottom thirds are just nothing. Um, I don't know why they've done that. But the problem with this game is it is just so dang difficult. <laughs> you so much as brush the grass and it's game over. Now you've got a time limit and I am absolutely, you know, going to snail pace here. Yeah, you've got to wonder just how much. <laughs> Back to the start. Yeah, you've got to wonder just how much uh, actual uh, sort of uh, gameplay this had before they released it. Surely they must have realised, wait a minute, this game's too difficult. But, uh, you know what, I'm sure it sold a lot, and the thing is, I did actually load the game up just to listen to music. See there, it's got base 3.6 kilometers. So I'm not that far away, but you know, have you got a time limit? I think you have got a time limit. Maybe not, I don't know. No, there is a time. I see the wee bit at the top time, so yeah, that is the last V8. It could have been a great game, but as it is, it is just impossible. Right, next up from Team 17, we have Project X. An absolutely glorious looking shoot 'em up. This is for the Commodore Amiga, I don't think it was released on any other systems. It's got a lovely soundtrack as well, very uh, 90s techno trance house, whatever you call it, I don't know. But yeah, this game, it just looked incredible. But I will hopefully demonstrate why it's on this list. You know, it starts off, starts off fam fairly tame, you think, you know, no, no more difficult than any other kind of shoot em up, but <laughs> it's just unforgiven, the speed of the game. You know, and the sad thing is, the, uh, the difficulty just killed the game, absolutely killed it for not just me, but for most people. They did bring out a remixed version, which I think may have addressed the difficulty. Um, but yeah, this is the original one I'm playing. I don't know whether... You know, a, a shoot em up has got to be... Uh, it's got to be smooth, I mean ideally sort of like 30 frames a second. This one... It's not 100% silky smooth, I don't know whether that made any difference, but to me I think it's just the, the actual the pace of the game, the speed at which the bodies move about, you know, you just have to brush them once. <laughs> and I think you lose all your weapons as well, which is a massive, I'm not going to say it's a flaw in the game, but you know, it makes it very, very difficult. I mean, you can see how quickly I'm losing lives here. I know that's partly down to me being rubbish, but it is a tough game. You know, when you try to get through this uh, asteroid field thing with a really, really kind of weak cannon, if they if they decided to leave, you know, leave your power ups intact, it would certainly help things along a wee bit. Now, I'm not even going to get to the the baddie, I don't think, but the. The, next, the first baddie you see is a kind of ball that just spews out all these hundreds of bullets and until you kind of suss out how to take care of it, it's just impossible. But yeah, that there you just saw it for a split second before I died. That is Project X. It could have been an amazing game. Right, this one, Battle Squadron. Now, this might just be me, but uh, this is on the Mega Drive, the Sega Mega Drive. I did play it on the Amiga and it was tough. And I've been playing it on the on the what do you call it the Mega Drive because I've got a real I've got a real Mega Drive and I just think it 
it lends itself better to, you know, the multiple uh, buttons of the controller. It's just so tough. It starts off not too bad for, you know, maybe the first few minutes. And then it just gets, the difficulty gets ramped up. There's so many enemies coming your way. And I think what doesn't help the game is the fact that it's 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 kind of a landscape game. If this was vertical, I know it's a vertical game, but if the, if the screen was long and narrow, you might have a bit more time to actually react and see what's coming. But, I mean, that power-up thing I was trying to destroy, it's almost like you just don't have the, the proper firepower to take care of what you're trying to shoot. And very soon, you get these... Uh, I call them predators. They're little uh, spaceships, but they hide underneath the ground and they're like invisible. But you can see the sort of outline, just like you, you know the, the predator the predator film. You can see the outline of them kind of moving. Yeah, that power up there. You can see them there. Yep, yeah, it's on for a split second. I mean, I would love to be able to play this game better, but it's just so damn difficult. It says it might just be me, but I have played it a fair bit. And I just find it verging on being impossible. So yeah, that is Battle Squad and that was my 8th game in the list. Two to go. Right, this next one, Ghouls by Micropower. This is on the Commodore 64. And this is featured because this was a game that I did have back in the day. And it is just stupidly hard, as I will no doubt ably demonstrate. It's a very, very early game. <laughs> and you've got a Pac-Man with legs. Expanded Sprite Fest. And here we go. Now the idea of the game is to collect the power pills and avoid bad avoid the baddies. Trying to get over that thing, whatever it is, I don't know what that is. A plant or something, spikes. <laughs> so you can't even fall, you know what I mean? It's just it's just insanely difficult. I never ever ever got off the first level. I think I once got up to that moving platform. <laughs> I think this game actually originally came out in the BBC, I've never played that version. Whoa. Oh, at least it didn't die there. Careful does it. <laughs> yeah, that is ghouls. If anybody can get past that first level then you're a true, a true gaming champion. Right, the last one, it could only be one game. If anybody ever watches my live feeds, you'll know how much... I wouldn't say I hate this game, because I actually used to play it a fair bit, just for the music. But this game is always a game I play last in any live feed, um, because it is just insanely difficult. In fact, I would, I would almost say it's impossible. What doesn't help is, as soon as the level starts, you've instantly got to start walking to the left. If you don't, if you even hesitate for one microsecond, it's, uh, you're going to lose a life. It looks simple. You know, if you looked at that, you think, that's quite an easy looking platform game, but the way he jumps doesn't really help things either. It's quite kind of slow motion. He jumps in a big kind of arc. <laughs> I have never even come close to fi See, I, I hesitated. You've got to be on your toes, you've got to remember to start walking. Go! And sillily as well, to jump, you don't just press the fire button, you've got to hold the joystick up and press the fire button. And unless you get the timing perfect, like I didn't, then you're going to die. So yeah, some of the game mechanics, like having to hold up and press the fire button, is a bit silly. It doesn't help the game. But I like the game because the music, the music's awesome. And you kind of pick that up there. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's just, it's completely unforgiving. I would, I would literally bet my mortgage on it that nobody has ever completed this game. I don't even know what the second level looks like, that's how, how difficult this game is. Yeah, it's just trying to judge when you need to jump. Ah, now that could well be the secret. You need to run right to the end and then jump up. But anyway, listen guys, that is China Miner. That is 10 of the games I find most impossible to play. As usual guys, thank you very much for watching.